is the third section in chapter three, flows in networks one. And this section is about finding an initial flow. So finding an initial flow is our first go at finding a flow through a network. We'll improve on this or maximize it or augment it um, in the following section, 3.4, looking at algorithm to do that. Um, and one thing we just need to remember is that the maximum flow of a route is the minimum capacity on that route. And we've looked at that before in previous sections. Example six, the diagram shows a capacitated directed network up here. The number on each arc represents the capacity of that arc. Part A, what we need to do is to state the maximum flows along SACT. So let's start with SACT first and then SBADT. So SACT, I can see that the minimum um, capacity on here is 11. So that's going to be the maximum flow for that route. Then the next route is SBADT. So we'll highlight that. So there it's highlighted and a minimum value, minimum capacity on that route is 17. So that would be the maximum flow on that route. Okay, part B, show these on a diagram. So we're just going to write that information on here. So here are my capacities. Now route SACT, SACT had a flow, maximum flow of 11. So I'll put that down here. So that goes in the circle, SACT 11. And then SBADT had a maximum flow of 17. So S B, so 17 there, um, SBA, so 17 there, um, and then A to D, so 17, and then D to T, that was also 17 there. Now, if we've got a maximum flow of 17 along this route, that means nothing can be flowing uh, along BD, because all 17 is going up there to A. So we need to mark this down as zero as well. And then um, part C, so I'll just put on diagram there. Part C, uh, using this as your initial flow diagram, calculate the value of the initial flow. So an initial flow is gonna be the flow out of the source or into the sink. Whichever way we do it, it's gonna be 11 plus 17. So that's going to be 28. Example seven, the diagram shows a capacitated directed network. The number on each arc represents the capacity of that arc. Given that arcs SG, EH, EJ, GJ, GK and JT are saturated, draw initial flow through the network. Okay, so here's my completed diagram. The capacities are shown in black. The um, saturated networks, which is basically the flows are shown in green. And now I can complete this diagram because I know that the flow into a vertex is equal to the flow out. So if we start here, for example, I've got a flow out of 26, which means that the flow in must also be 26. Then if I look at this vertex here, the flow out of it is 12. Now the flow into it needs to be 12, but it's 17, which means five of that flow needs to go this way. Okay, so that you are only left with the uh, 12 going out. So we've got five going into F. Then we'll move our way to the top of the diagram here. So if this is a flow 14 going in, there needs to be 14 going out. And the same along the bottom here, if I've got 10 going in, then this needs to be 10 going out here. Now I'm left to work out what these need to be SF and FJ. So I'll look at the flow of the network, what's going into the sink here, 14 plus 28 plus 10, that gives me a flow of 52, which also means that the flow out of the sink must be 52. Now I've already got 26 and 17. So if I take those away 
from 52, 26 and 17, that leaves nine. So the flow here must be nine. That tells me that going into vertex F, I have 15 and nine, which is 14. So the flow going out must also be 14. And we'll just check that that all works with vertex J, 12 plus 14 plus two, 28, yes, so that all balances. So those numbers now in green in circles represent my initial flow through this network.